Creative Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Chris Griffith, the CEO of Goldfields, which has just lifted its half-year interim dividends, reported good results. Chris, I'd really like to focus on the South African asset, the South Deep, which we are told from a reserve point of view is the third biggest gold mine in the world. You seem to speak encouragingly this morning about South Deep. What gives you that encouragement? The way that you introduced this is exactly why Goldfields many years ago decided to buy into South Deep. The fact is that it is a good grade, extremely large ore body. Uh, and uh, at, at that time, it was the second largest uh, ore body of resource in the world. Now it's third. And that was the reason why Goldfields bought into it. For many years, I think uh, it's true to say that South Deep hasn't lived up to that promise um, because of the complexity of mining a large size ore body at depth. I think over the number of years, uh, the team at South Deep have, I think, learned the hard way about how to go about doing that. And I think over the last three years, what we've seen is um, some really encouraging signs of um, productivity improvements. Uh, and of course, over the last three years, the mine has been cash positive. That's always a good place to be uh, after many years of, of losing very substantial amounts of money. So I think a few things uh, to say why I think we're fairly encouraged by the progress. One is that over time, the team have, have designed a mining method that I think is appropriate for, um, for mining a bulk ore body at depth. Um, so I think they've just learned how to do this a lot better. Um, they've also, I think, been through some fairly difficult times in 2018 when they restructured the mine, uh, reduced the workforce by over 2,000, and I think they've got a, a more appropriate sized workforce for a mechanized operation. The fact that the majority of that mine is now mechanized uh, on, a, on a layout that works. Uh, and then I think they've put in place a very good leadership team under the leadership of Martin Priest uh, and the mine manager, uh, Benford. So all around, I think we've got a good team. We've uh, restructured the mine. We've got the mining layout that works. And, uh, and the results are that we continue to see improving productivity from South Deep. And I think, and the fact that we're making money. So all around the trajectory that that mine is on is now very positive. And when I went down there, I was amazed at how different it was. I mean, I could have gone down there and driven in a double-decker bus and I would have still had a room for the roof rack. You know, it is so different. But I suppose that also poses its challenges. Maybe that's why it's been so slow in coming through. The sort of technology that is needed wasn't really readily off the shelf in South Africa, but has it now developed and can it be advanced and get to a level where we meet what happens elsewhere in the world? Yeah, you, you're right, Martin, is we're certainly not there yet. Uh, we have uh, consistently indicated already, Nick, at the beginning of the year, advised that we think that from this year's production, there's still possibility to improve by another 20 to 30% on top of what we're forecasting to achieve this year over the next four years or so. So I think, Ma uh, Martin, there's, uh, th that we, we're not there yet, but that, that very encouraging trajectory is uh, underway. Um, the fact is that it's a, a wide ore body. So it means that you actually want to take as much as you can out of that ore body, take the sweet spots out. Um, but because it's a dipping ore body as well, um, you, you sort of continually need to take new cuts to get into the lower portions of that ore body. Um, I think the long haul stoping is not a, a type of mining method that is, uh, that is familiar to most South Africans, but it's a fairly common bulk ore type of uh, mining method that is used extensively across the world. So as we build the skills to do this kind of mining in South Africa at South Deep, uh, over time, you would, I think, justifiably believe that we can just keep getting better at this. And you are actually seeing that productivity improvements. Um, if you look at the amount of meters drilled per rig over the last number of years, we have improved that by over 50%. The productivity for the teams working on those machines is now over 100% up of where it was just a few years ago. I think all of those are just uh, give encouraging signs that the teams are learning how to mine uh, gold mining in a, in a sort of more bulk type of mining method. 
uh, and that is new for South Africans, but certainly the team are learning as we go along. And with that 40 megawatts I think you've got on surface you're planning, would you have gone for the 100 megawatt under this new embedded system or is 40 ideal? So 40 is ideal because if you look at what power we need during the day, so in the absence of having storage, you don't want to generate more during the day than you can use. Um, so eventually when you've got you know, an ability to put all of this into like an Uber battery, then you can consider doing more than you need on the day shift. But at the moment, for the sort of six and a half hours that you get realistically during the day to be able to generate power from solar, that's the number that we use. So it's about 80% of a day's during the, when the sun is shining of the power that we need. And that's why we've gone for 40. So the answer is no, we wouldn't be going now for any more than that until such time that we get cost competitive storage ability. And then we absolutely will be able to extend because we've got the space at South Deep, we'll be able to extend that solar generation and then store it and then use it during the times when the sun doesn't shine. And then going to the bigger picture of gold fields being a pure gold play, what is the advantage of that? Generally, shareholders say, look, if I want to invest in gold, I'll go to a gold company. If I want to invest in, a, in PGMs, I'll go to a PGM company. If I want to invest in copper, I'll go to a copper company. And generally, those companies are better at running those companies than if you try and be all things and sort of mine all, uh, all types of commodities. So generally, investors like it better to invest in companies that are, that are focused on a particular commodity. That doesn't mean that there's not, uh, that there's not uh, companies that have, uh, that have multiple commodities in their portfolio, but generally, that's the reason why. And the fact is that we don't particularly have access to any other commodities that make sense. I mean, we do, as byproducts, generate um, and mine some additional uh, copper and silver. Um, but those are pretty much byproducts, and we're comfortable with that at the moment. So there's opportunities for us in gold. We believe that um, focusing on gold is right. But at the same time, it's useful never to say never. Uh, but generally, that's the reason why, is that generally analysts, uh, generally investors, want to invest in companies that are very focused on making a success of the commodity that they're mining. And finally, you made an interesting statement, and I quote it. You said, we believe that we must now start looking at ways of preserving the value we have created beyond 2024. Can you just elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've been growing over the last number of years with the investment in a Sanko joint venture in Ghana, with the investment in Greer JV in Australia. So we have been growing our production volume. Uh, and for the next few years, we are developing the Solaris Norte mine in Chile. So that'll actually take us, when we execute that, we'll be at uh, having grown, you know, from about 2 million ounces, now about 2.35 all the way to 2.8 million ounces. So we would have grown that. And, and rather than sort of seeing that slip off over time, uh, the, having got there, our aspiration is to say, can we maintain that volume in a values focused way? And I say that because we don't just want to chase that volume. If we can't generate new and additional and create new value, then the answer is we won't do that. But I think that's why we say having got to that kind of value, Martin, the question for us now is, can we maintain that? And uh, we've got a bit of time to be looking at some of the extra pieces of the puzzle that will need to be done to maintain that value. We've got some time to do that. And that's something that the team uh, are starting to look at now. That was Creamy Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Chris Griffith, the CEO of Goldfields.